Now, for this part of the question, what I've done is sketch what we're given. And we certainly need to add to this diagram. So just to recap, we've got our two particles then, P, mass 0.3 kilograms, and Q with a mass of m kilograms. And they're attached by this light, inextensible string passing over smooth pulley. And particle P is moving up this rough plane. So we need to mark on some forces. Now whether this plane was rough or smooth, there'll always be the weight of the particle P. That will act downwards, so we need to mark that in, okay? So I'll mark that in, acting downwards, its weight would be mg, 0.3g in this particular case. We'll mark that in as newtons. There'll also be a normal contact force from the surface, and we'll call that R, R newtons. There'll also be a tension coming from the string here, and that's going to be wanting to pull it up in this direction, so we'll mark that in as T newtons. And because the plane is rough, there's going to be friction opposing motion. So if it's moving up the plane, friction will act back down the plane. And because it's sliding, that friction is limiting. And when it's limiting, it's equal to mu, the coefficient of friction, times r, the normal contact force. Now we're told that mu for this example is a half. So instead of writing mu r here, I'm just going to say that that's equal to a half r, half r newtons. Okay, well, they're the only forces acting on P at the moment. Now, if we turn our attention to Q, the forces acting on Q will be its weight, which will act downwards, and because its mass was m, it will be mg newtons. And there'll be an upward tension coming through the string here. Now, it's going to be exactly the same as the tension over here. And... It's worth mentioning why it is, because sometimes they ask us, why is the tension the same? It's because it's passing over a smooth pulley. So I've marked in the forces acting on P and Q in a question like this. The other thing is to mark on the accelerations. And we're told in this question that particle P is accelerating at 1.4 meters per second up the plane. So we'll mark that in as an acceleration arrow of 1.4 meters per second per second. And that means that Q will accelerate downwards also with exactly the same acceleration, 1.4 meters per second per second. And that's because the string is inelastic, okay? Or I should say really inextensible, it doesn't stretch. So as soon as Q starts to fall, P will start to move immediately up the plane. Okay, so we've got the diagram marked in with all our forces, the acceleration arrows. We've also got this angle alpha. We're told that the tan of alpha equals three quarters. And it's worth mentioning that if we just mark that in here, tan alpha equals three quarters, you don't really need to find out what alpha is by doing the inverse tan of three quarters in questions like this. All you need to do is draw a sketch of a right angle triangle and the ratio of the sides. Because if this is alpha, tan of alpha compares opposite to adjacent. So the opposite side would be three units and the adjacent side would be four units. And by Pythagoras' theorem, this is a well-known three, four, five triangle. So without finding alpha, we would know things like cos of alpha, which would be four-fifths adjacent over hypotenuse, and the sine of alpha, which would be opposite over hypotenuse, three-fifths. Okay, so that's that part done. Now for this first part, we've got to find out then what this normal contact forces are. And to do that, what I would want to do is consider particle P. So it's good to just have a little intro here, consider P, so the reader knows exactly whether you're looking at P or Q in problems like this. 
So we consider P and for part A what we do is in order to find R we need to resolve perpendicular to the plane and I'm going to take away from the plane as positive. So we look at all the forces acting along this line here perpendicular to the plane and this angle is alpha exactly the same as the angle of the plane. We should be used to this idea with working on planes by now. So when it comes to resolving going outwards as positive we've got all of R acting out in this positive sense so we can say R for that. As for the frictional force half R well that's perpendicular to this line that we're resolving in so this force has no effect and the same applies to the tension T it's at right angles to this direction. But when it comes to the weight, 0.3 g newtons, because this force is inclined to this dotted line here, we need to think of it as split into two components. One component will be into the plane and the other one will be down the plane. The one down the plane will have no effect because it will be at right angles to the direction we are resolving in. But the one into the plane because it contains the angle here, alpha, it is the cosine of alpha that we use. Its value will be 0.3g cos alpha. And it acts in the opposite sense to this direction. So it would be minus 0.3g cos alpha. So I'm assuming that you're familiar with this thing of splitting a force into components. Okay. If not, just go on my website and look at splitting a force into components. Now we've got that. The, uh, that is the resultant force acting on the particle here in this direction. And that resultant must equal zero because it's in relative equilibrium to the plane. It's not moving away from the plane or into the plane. So that would be our equation. We can get R now very easily because all we've got to do is add 0.3 g cos alpha to both sides. So we've got 0.3 times g. g is 9.8 and the cosine of alpha, we can just take it from here, is adjacent over hypotenuse 4 fifths. And if you work this out, you'll find that you get 2.352 or you can round it up to say three significant figures and you've got 2.35. 2.35 newtons to three significant figures. You could leave it in terms of g if you wanted to. If you just left that as g there you've got 0.3 times 4 fifths and that comes to 0.24 g. So either way you can either go for that version or you can express it as one of these two answers. Okay?